Hey everybody, welcome to Creek Chicken Outfitters. This is Andy, I'm gonna to talk to you today about fly grip turning. Here I have one of my beginning projects. This is going to be a nine foot eight weight fly rod. Um, and this one is a kind of a modified full wells grip that I've come up with, one of my designs, along with this fighting butt. So I'm gonna teach you how to turn a cork grip today. So starting a cork grip starts out with cork rings like you see on this steel mandrel. This is a 1 8 inch steel mandrel that I use to turn on the lathe with. So you have your cork rings and they're, they come in plain, many different types of burl styles, colors, widths, you name it. If you get out there and research, there are tons and tons of options. Uh, this is a, kind of like a tiger burl here. Um, this one has a little bit of dark burl, kind of a medium burl with a little bit of green in it. And this one is uh, much the same. It's a little bit lighter, just three different styles. But then what we do is we place our cork rings right here on the mandrel. And then we would take, I use wood glue or either clear Gorilla Glue, depending on what I want to do. Um, but you spread a little bit of glue between each ring. You press them together. I give them a little, twist to get the glue set well and do that all the way up until you have something like this one. Now this is the finished one that we're going to be doing today. We're going to be turning it on the lathe and I'll show you every bit of it. So this one's been glued. This is tight bond two wood glue that I've used on this one and uh, one of the things I like about it is it sands well because obviously it's meant for wood. Uh, the Gorilla Glues and some of the other ones that are a little more flexible maybe um, tend to gum up sandpaper a little bit. So, but anyway, we'll get into it. Let me set up the lathe. Be right back with you. All right, guys, we're back at the lathe and I've got my mandrel set up here with my cork blank. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be turning a seven inch, um, half wells grip. So it's more of the, I would say five weight and below style for a lot of rods. Um, this one's not going to have a fighting butt, but so I wanted to show you guys just the principle on which I turn these. And so we'll get started. What are we gonna start with is just our typical 80 grit sandpaper right here. And we're gonna rough it out and do a little bit of shaping with this. We're gonna take it down quite a ways. Uh, I don't have a exact, there's no exact science for me. I do it by feel and by what I want it to look like. And uh, each grip kind of custom made to fit my hand I have pretty average hands for a guy, so most people have tend to, uh, they've said that they like the way they were done, so. But this is just to show you how to turn one and the process behind it, so let's get started. Now, I've not tested this mic, so hopefully you can hear me over the lathe. It's not too loud. But we'll get started. We're going to rough it out. things with turning corks is it gets really dusty. So you want to wear a mask. I am wearing a dust mask. Right, you can see. You can see that. You can see that. You can see that. So there we have our first initial turning with the 80 grit. Now that took quite a bit off. It took my glue lines off so now you can see that it's nice and blended. You can't tend to see the lines too much in it. And uh, we're just gonna go from there. Not sure if you guys could hear me for the noise of the lathe. So anyway, onward.
All right, so we've got a decent shape going here. So what I've had to do is because I want to thin this area here, I've got this front tapered about like I want. So I want to come down and take out some of the center here and just contour this a little thinner right here in this pop that in the heel of your hand. See that just, well, that feels pretty good anyway. But uh, I do want to take it down just a little bit. So I've had to narrow up my sandpaper. So once you want to start doing a more focused area, I just tear it in half so I can focus on a little bit more specific area without taking too much more off of the, the uh, first third and the last third of the grip because I want it to flare at the end. I just like that design. It's pretty, it's sleek. But see, we're still using our 80 grit, so we're hogging off a bunch of material here. So, all right, let's continue on. All right, we've got our nice contour here and we are done with the 80 grit. So now what all we want to do is to smooth this out and to put the little final final shape to it. That's a nice, comfortably thin, it's going to be a lightweight grip. I like it. So we're going to go down to 220 just for a second here. And then uh, once we smooth it out to the touch, we're going to go to 600. And it'll be just slick as it can be. The great thing about cork to me is that even though you get it down to a 600 grit smoothness, it still retains that grippy, nice, solid purchase feel that Cork has. And that's what I like about it. So let's continue on. Here we go. All right, now we've got it down to that 400. Didn't take long at all, man. That's gonna be a pretty little grip right there. I like it. Feels good to the hand. I'm always messing with it. And, feeling to see if I want to change anything, but I really like the way that feels. It's got kind of a nice uniform sleek look to it. So here we go with the 600. Now it's going to be slick. See you in a second. Woo-wee! That is slick. I like it. I'm going to smooth off the ends there. Look at nice and sharp edge here. Some of them I'll bevel and some I won't. And still a few little rough edges on it. So we're going to keep going with that 600. See you in a sec. All right. Now that the grip is pretty much done, that is slick and pretty. I'm going to take a clean rag here. And I'm just going to basically dust it. And this will basically clean it. So that when I apply the finish to the grip, it'll be that much prettier. I have to let the rag get wrapped up in the lathe. If it does, let go. Boy, that is just pretty feeling right there. Man, I like this. This, this one turned out pretty good. Anyway, there you have it. Oh yeah, look how clear and pretty that is. So be right back and I'll show you how I finish it. All right guys, it's finish time. So this is what I use. Good old Watco butcher block oil. And uh, now that it's all shaken up, we'll get after it. So we've got our butcher block oil all shaken up good. We're going to turn the lathe back on. We're going to dab us a little bit of finish here. And here we go. Look at that. Boy, boy, boy. It's going to be a pretty grip, guys. And now this cork soaks up finish like crazy. So don't be afraid to use it because I'll end up putting several coats of it on. You see it darken it up a little bit. Now it does dry and it does lighten up, and especially after we buff it in, it'll be it'll be beautiful. Look at that. Woo Pretty. Now 
my lathe is a belt driven lathe so in order to change the speeds this one's not a variable which would be nice but I can't knock my lathe I like it a lot it allows me to do what I do here and I think custom grip making is just another thing you can do to your rods that add that special you know that this extra little bit of craftsmanship that goes into it that people appreciate of course if you have a client that's local and you're building them a rod they can always come in for this process and you can actually fit the grip to them as you're turning it which is you know a cool option for people so this is taking this oil in pretty good Just make sure not to forget our backside here backside <laughs> anyway well that is nice so anyway that's our first uh coat of butcher block and uh I will let that set up for a few hours. It doesn't usually take that long to get real tacky and dust proof, but it does need to fit there. It does need to cure and the instructions say six hours. I don't know about that. I'll come back with the cloth and I'll buff that and I'll put another coat on. Let me buff that just a bit. And I'll put another coat on and I'll do this a couple of times and then, you know, then you'll have a finished, waterproof, beautiful grip. And that's pretty much what it's going to look like on the rod. So I'm pretty proud of it. What do you guys think? Share your thoughts, comments, uh, encouragement, discouragement. I, hey, I'm, I'm all about criticism and uh, as long as it's constructive and helpful. But appreciate you guys watching. Hope it helps somebody. And uh, maybe we'll do a video on actually applying this grip, reaming it out in the next process. So anyway, guys, hey, tight lines. Talk to you later.